So you're in school? Uh, yeah, at the moment, yes. Studying uh, digital illustration. How to take my last year uh, next year. All right. So you're uh, you're getting up to the point where things are about to get scary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't remind me that. <laughs> I just want to make sure that like, I, I, I was I'm always curious, like somebody's coming up to like the end of their school. It's always like, OK, so um, are you freaked out yet or, or not? Like as if they're not yeah, like yeah. it's I am. It, I am. <laughs> I, if, they, if someone's not freaked out, that would worry me more than being mm -hmm. freaked out. But yeah. Yeah, so you're you you pass the test. You're not a total psycho. <laughs> no. <laughs> um. I mean, it, it it seems like you're getting a lot of these uh, these basic skills down pretty well. Like, what what do you have questions about? Um, mostly, you know, if, um, I mean, if the rendering was good enough. I know I I still have a lot to a lot of work to do on my rendering. But, mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to. Um, find a middle ground between uh, a realistic and a stylized rendering uh -huh. trying to go more uh, more or less um, along the lines of the uh, stylized rendering with the uh, line works in between yeah i mean um i like your drawings quite a bit you have like a bunch of stuff here that looks like you're studying really hard on painting mm -hmm. but when i see your drawings they just seem so much more like natural and you're not showing yeah. a lot of it. Like I'm seeing a lot of stuff that's studies on here. I mean, I have a lot of I have a lot of uh, sketches and a lot of uh, line works and studies. Some not really rough, and you know, I don't have them on the art station. Uh huh. Well, like but, um, yeah. my favorite moments in here is like, where are we? One of these. All right. So we've got. It's like we have this thing here. We got this rough sketch. And I love the look of this, the kind of grimy look of it. Yeah. It. I don't know how you feel about it. I think it looks really cool, like this. Yeah, I really. Uh, yeah, yeah, I really like. I really like that one as well. Yeah. And then um, you have this cleaned up line art that's like barely visible. It's fine. Mm -hmm. And then you do a super clean silhouette, and then you got muddy painting <laughs> on top of it. And I'm like, oh no, where did the thing go that I love so much? Like ten seconds ago. Um, it looks like you put a ton of work in to take a step backwards here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like I see this happen over and over again, and it's like such a pain because the uh, it feels like there is a demand inside the concept art industry to do a certain type of painting as a finish. But I don't actually think it exists because I know plenty of artists who work primarily in pencil. I mean, concept professional concept artists, lead concept artists, widely renowned ones, biggest projects in the world. Uh, high in demand from Hollywood art, uh, you know, art, Hollywood directors and uh, top video game studios. They just work in pencil, right? Yeah. And so, okay. I see, but I see over and over again uh, aspiring artists who are creating really great looking drawings. Um, go, okay, that's enough drawing for me, <laughs> and I this these drawings are so good. Like this drawing is incredible. And then you're like, enough drawing for me. Time to do some bad painting. Just draw more. I mean, just like do, just like go deeper into drawing because it's not like you're the best drawer in the world, right? Yeah. yeah um, but your drawings are great. Like, I love the like, y you know, your mechanical design is is really interesting and good. Um, it looks like you're having a ton of fun with it. It's super clear. Like I don't have any problems reading what's going on in here. Like you've got some areas that are a little bit like uh, unconfident and fiddly, maybe. But then oh, yeah. over here, it's like um, it's really crisp and clear. You're throwing in a, a little more shading than I think you even need in order to really fill this out. And um, I don't know. I mean, uh, this looks. This looks really good, and then you know, but I don't see th this is my one of my favorite things in the whole portfolio. And yet, when I go to your thumbnails here, when I see this page, I don't see anything that looks anything like yeah. that. Okay. I always wish it. I promise. <laughs> this will be the thumbnail. Yeah, but like, um, you know, like I would like to see ten of those up here. You know, mm. like I bet you probably have a bunch of drawings that you're hiding because you want to show. I'm good at painting. 
I need to be good yeah. at painting. Yeah. I'm going to show my painting studies. I don't think you should be showing your studies. I think the studies, if they're useful for anything, are there to establish, like, let you experiment with styles. I like the dynamic line uh, mm -hmm. with the rendering on the inside. It's a cool look. All right, use it for a, a use it for a, a design. You know, come up with an original guy and do it in this style. Um, I want to see you do this with some really simple color wash. Mm -hmm. Just uh, a, a good, it doesn't need to be like, a, it doesn't need to be a fully clean line art. You know, don't need to ink. No, okay. Uh, don't do anything that looks like comic book inking. Don't get this clean. Y yeah, probably cleaner than this, but mm -hmm. rougher than this, which is why I'm saying this is interesting because it's a mixture of like uh, tighter, cleaner lines, like for the face, and then, you know, rougher sketchier bits on things like clothing folds where it's just it's nice to be expressive but it's not so necessary to be clean because you know who cares and then you throw some color washes over the top of this and you're in amazing shape as far as expressing the design and showing it off in a way that that looks really finished like finding a way that allows you to do the things that you're really good at but you mm -hmm. don't waste time doing a bunch of stuff that you're doing out of obligation that's where the magic happens and like you know you have all these ideas that you want to try out i i would not be surprised if you just have buckets full of really cool sketches that you are hiding away because they're in black and white a lot, of, a lot of traditional sketches yeah traditional sketches too okay great yeah so I like, uh, three sketch three sketchbooks that i filled uh, last year it's cool all right great yeah, um these, uh, sketches, like pull some of your the, favorite sketches uh, and then see if you can apply some of the really simple um color and you know, volume treatments that you've been doing on studies and see if you can find like a super efficient way of bringing a pencil sketch that you love in into uh, in, into a format that feels more like presentable and finished. But yeah. I also think you should figure out ways of highlighting your pencil sketching inside your concept portfolio because it's like uh, people love pencil sketches <laughs> and they're like, yeah. And they're really easy to do. And they're like, it, you know, because you, all you need is a pencil and paper to do it. Like, you know, you don't have to have like a really elaborate workstation set up. You don't need to like, you know, make sure everything's charged or plugged in. It's like, you know, you always have access to a pencil. And so if, if that's like your strongest tool, uh, it, having a really strong tool that's also cheap and accessible is like, uh, is like a cheat code, right? Everybody else is stuck having to like, be in exactly the right environment with exactly the right stuff in order to be them their best self and all you need to, to be is like have a comfortable place to sit down and you're like a uh, you know you're in in your most comfortable spot you know that's okay. that's uh that is absolutely strength uh so, okay, so basically um, quick sketches line art and flat colors on you know the, the quick sketches i will do right yeah or even you know quick uh bits of like you know, like you haven't gone overboard with the rendering on like this piece, but you know, you've built in a lot of volume and it's really expanded on the idea quite a bit. It's a very simple uh, portrait, but you've finished it in a way that's sort of simple and elegant. Like what's the, what's the, what's the simple hyper-efficient way that you can treat your sketches is a question I've got for you, having not actually seen them. Um, but it's, I think something that you should spend some time exploring because and it pivots off of like the studies that you're doing. Like th those should be there specifically to enable you to do the other stuff. Um, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, you know, I don't necessarily see it here. I think it feels like you are more comfortable doing sci-fi stuff than fantasy. Yeah, I am. I am. But it, um, doing um, sci-fi uh, sci stuff is uh, I find it really hard. That, you know to um, come to a specific type of rendering at one point and going overboard with details compared um, to fantasy stuff in which, you know, you can be a little more simple. If you, if you know what I mean. Um, where's, a, where's Brian Mattias? Yeah. Uh, there's somebody I used to work with who mm. I think about all the time because he's, uh, he's done a shitload of work on like Star Wars and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, Connor Driest? Who's Connor Driest? 
Brian Joseph. This looks like they're just imitating him. Where, where's Brian's actual stuff? There he is, Brian. Oh, that was inspired, yeah. Yeah, okay. So Brian's done a bunch of work on a bunch of big projects, Mandalorian and whatnot, you know. Uh, he and I used to work together back at Kabam. And, like, um, you know, a lot of his Star Wars stuff like he has these like keyframes or whatever that are like really rendered, but there's like a lot of it that is, he does, he's done a lot of it where it's like really, really flat. Yeah. Like you can see like, instead of going and rendering in all of these like folds and stuff, he's just got like a few like lasso yeah, cuts. Yeah. And you know, inside a production environment, that's basically all you need to do. And it's mm -hmm. like, if there are certain disciplines inside the entertainment industry that like require you to get into like tons of lighting and materials and surface textures and painting and whatnot but there are a lot of even really very highly prestigious jobs that require none of it um and you can see like how like simple of a finishing job a piece like this is and this is for, you know, some of the very top jobs in this industry. So, like, I, I think that if your design work is really good and you present it in a nice way that's, like, like clean, um, you know, y you don't need to worry about building all that up. Like, a really, really good sketch with really simple uh, color and rendering that feels like it complements the drawing. And you could be an art station hero. Yeah. Anybody can. Um, it's, it, 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 like, if you love drawing, uh, focus on the drawing. I would, man. <laughs> I feel like I give this advice out all the time. Like, I feel like there's this huge, like, push for everyone to want to do painting, painting, painting all the time. I love painting and, like, I look forward to the painting part. But, like, I feel like the there's, like, a huge number of people out there, like, that painting is not the number one thing they want to do and they are just guilting themselves into doing it all the time because of stuff they see on like the front station uh, front page of art station and mm -hmm. I, I gotta tell you it's not necessary it's not like a real thing i keep that in mind yes yeah just save the time like don't um don't beat yourself up over it mm -hmm. i won't all right great Thanks,